All right then, gang. So there's two final things I want to talk about now. Resetting the store state and a useful hook called store to refs. So let's start with resetting the store state. And by that, I mean taking the state back to its original default value as specified in the state property on the store itself. So to do this, Pinya gives us access to a special function called reset preceded by a dollar sign. And we can access that method directly on the store, either in a component setup function, for example, or in a component template. So let's try doing this in the app component. I'm gonna create now a button at the bottom of the template. And this button is just gonna reset the state, right, when we click it. Now, I also wanna attach a click event to this button and set it equal to something. And that thing is gonna be task store, which is available to us in the template, then dot dollar sign reset. And then when we click on this button, the store is gonna completely reset to the original state because that's what this reset function does for us. And that original state is where the tasks are empty, an empty array, and the loading state is false. So let's give this now a whirl in the browser. Okay, so we can see this button right here, reset state. And when I click on this, hopefully all of these are gonna go because the initial value, remember, of the state is gonna be where the tasks is an empty array. So let's reset and we can see now there are no tasks, awesome. Now we didn't persist this change to the JSON file. We didn't make any kind of asynchronous request. So when we refresh, we do get those back. But now you know how to reset the state. So the next thing I wanna show you is a hook we can use from Pinya called store to refs. And what this hook does is get all of the different state properties and getters from a store and it creates refs out of those. So what I'll do down here is say const and we're gonna destructure a few things from this in a second. So let's just leave this as an empty object at the minute. And then we set that equal to store to refs. And if I click on this, it should auto import it at the top. It has done right here, awesome. So we have to invoke this and pass in a store and that is gonna be the task store. So let me paste that in here. And then, like I said, we can just destructure any of the different state properties or getters from this. And it's gonna create refs for each one of those. So I'll say tasks and then also loading, they're the state properties. And then also faves, which is a getter, total count, we can spell it, and then fave count. So they're the getters. So we have these properties right here and then these getters right here. Let me just close this off to give us more room. So that's all we do. We use this hook, we pass in the store and we destructure any properties that we want from them. And they're all refs now. So what I could do is now return each of these things down at the bottom, like so. And then inside the template, instead of saying task store.tasks or task store.loading, we can just use these directly. So let me come up here and wherever we see task store, let's just delete that and the dot as well, like so, and then here, and then down here and here. And I think, is that it? Let me have a look. I think that is pretty much it. All right, so now then, if I save this, it should still all work. Okay, and everything in the browser still works as it should do. If we try a couple of these to make sure they work, yep, everything still works. Delete, refresh, yep, reset, awesome. Everything still works. So that's just an option for you to use store to refs instead of typing out the task store or whatever store you're using all of the time in the template. But one thing, you cannot use actions this way. We cannot get actions and store them as refs using store to refs. So if you need the actions in your template, then definitely just use the store itself. So then my friends, hopefully now you've got a good grasp of how Pinya works and how to use the store in your application. In the future, I will be releasing more advanced Pinya courses, both on YouTube and on the NetNinja Pro site. So stay tuned for those.
So then, my friends, I really, really hope you enjoyed this series and you learned something along the way. If you did, please, please, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And if you want to access all of my YouTube courses without adverts, also get access to premium courses and early access courses as well, you can do at netninja.dev. You can sign up for NetNinja Pro, which is just $9 a month and also half price for the first month with this promo code right here and for that like i said you get access to every course without adverts without youtube adverts you also get access to exclusive courses not found anywhere else you get access to my premium courses on udemy and also early access to all of my youtube courses as well so the link to this page to sign up is going to be down below again i really hope you enjoyed this series and i'm going to see you in the very next one